Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is the chart for the full moon, 9th of June, and it's set for London and it occurs at 14.09. So it's the afternoon. And of course, it's the afternoon the very day after the election in the UK. So it's a, a very powerful, significant full moon. Now, always at a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite each other. The sun currently moving through Gemini, the sign governed or ruled, either way, by Mercury, the messenger. And Mercury is in its own sign of Gemini, and it moved in on Tuesday, 6th of June, at 23.15. Also in her own sign, is Venus in Taurus and she moved in on the 6th of June at 8.26. Now that is important because in the UK the two leaders Jeremy Corbyn is a Gemini so Mercury is his sign and Theresa May is a Libran so Venus is her sign. So it's of special interest this particular full moon the very day after the election. What is very powerful that is occurring and it occurs just under an hour after this full moon, is Jupiter. Here's Jupiter over here, currently moving through the sign of Libra. It does move through a sign every year, it's a 12 year cycle. It's stationed, it's got a little S next to it. That means it's about to change direction, it's about to move forward. As seen from Earth, it doesn't literally do that. And it's doing that very significantly at this full moon. Now the moon is governed by Jupiter. Here is the moon, the bottom of the chart below the horizon, so it's, we won't see the moon till later that day. And the moon in Sagittarius is very closely connected to Saturn. Now Sagittarius is the sign of the future. It's the sign of looking up into the sky, hoping for something better in life. It's a fire sign. The moon is not happy in fire signs. It, it prefers the coolness of the water signs, such as Cancer, and also it likes to be in the sign of Taurus, an earth sign. So the moon is not particularly favorable. Fire is enthusiasm and over emotional, I would say. The Saturn energy is very much keeping it in check <laughs> because Saturn is like the brick wall, you know, and it's about boundaries. It's about the tradition, the old ways. It can be resistance as well, procrastination, those kinds of issues. But at its best, it gives discipline. Now, it is also retrograde at the moment in the sky, but it's forming, and you can see this brilliant triangle energy. It's a grand trine in fire. So it's actually forming this connection to Uranus. Uranus is about the future, the new, the unconventional. Saturn is very much the opposite. It's about the old. So we've got a combination of old and new at that, this full moon chart. One very interesting thing that's occurring, and it's, it's the sun and moon have moved away from the exact energy but it's still there and that's Neptune. Neptune's in Pisces. Here it is and you notice the degree the Sun and Moon are at 18 that's why I said it's moving away but they are forming a square at the full moon. Now Neptune is confusion. Neptune is the god of the ocean, the sea or the fog, the mist and can very much be obscure facts we might not see things clearly. So there's a lot of heat, a lot of emotion here, but also there might be pain, disappointment, hurt. These are Neptune and Chiron issues. Notice Chiron is also in Pisces and the moon, although it's wide, is actually also making a right angle to Chiron. Whatever happens at an election, people are bound to be disappointed. People are bound to be you know, feel grief that their party didn't win, whoever they may be. Also of interest, and I think you might have spotted it, is Mars. Here's Mars in the sign of Cancer. It's right at the top of this 
chart except, except for the UK. Now Mars is the the warrior energy, it's how we get things done. And it is really weak in the sign of Cancer because it's emotional, it's governed by the moon in turn. So Mars is kind of really, kind of limp, dare I say. But also in Cancer it is looking to help people and very much to help families as such. But Mars really is, for each of us personally, is our inner warrior. Our, the, the fact that you know, we just do it, get on and do stuff. It is also just past, but it's still there, the right angle to Chiron. And, and I would say that what's been going on in terms of the terror attacks has very much described that, you know, the, the feelings of people, but also the courage and bravery of people coming to each other's support and, and just going out and doing, you know, going, yes, I'll, I'll um, be a true hero, shall we say. Jupiter, right, the moon, going back, is governed by Jupiter. So the moon and Jupiter are very related at this time. And the fact that Jupiter is turning. Now Libra, the shadow of Libra, is indecision. It's a planet to do with justice. It's a planet to do with the law and balance in Libra, harmony. However, the however being, it's because it's Libra, it kind of peace at any price. It's also at a right angle to Pluto. And Pluto is also in a very difficult relationship to the Sun. Can you see that green dotted line going down there? The Sun and Pluto are in exact degrees. They are an awkward relationship. It's called an inconjunct. The very word itself, inconjunct, gives you some idea of what that means. And an inconjunct is very much about change. It's very much about release. And it's also about letting go. Now Pluto is wealth, the plutocracy. So here's a contrast of the sun, which is always about leadership. That's the nature of the sun. It is the leader, if you like, of the orchestra of all the planets. It is forming this difficult connection, and then it's an exact connection to this energy of Pluto, plutocracy, god of the underworld, great wealth. I won't elaborate. I think you can draw your own conclusions there. We do have Venus, coming back to Venus. What's she up to? She's just passed a connection, exact connection, to Uranus. That happened on, on Saturday. That was the 3rd of June. Surprises, shocks. Uranus is very much about shocks and it's still there. Venus is still very, very close to that Uranus. However, Venus is making a very good connection to Mars. Exact, again, exact degree there. So this is why, you know, if I think about the election, of course, on Thursday, I can't predict it. It's really difficult. And that election chart, 7 a.m., will have Cancer as its rising sign, which is the moon, and which will also still be, will be in Sagittarius. So the full moon and the election chart are very connected. What else can I see in this chart? Because it, it's a, there's a lot going on. There is a connection of Pluto and the Sun. There's also Jupiter and Neptune are also very close in degree. So there's also a letting go there, a release, a change. About what? About the law, justice peace and Neptune healing at its ultimate beneficial aspect but also disappointment it can be disappointment and finally if I look at it again I'm seeing what's above the horizon the Sun the Sun is strong it's in the ninth house to do with the future and Mercury is about logic in its own sign. That's what it means, logic. Jupiter is not strong. Mercury is stronger. So therefore, the moon governed by Jupiter, I would say is weaker. 
Therefore, hopefully, <laughs> what we see, what the outcome will be at the end of the week, the full moon, is people use their judgment and they use their wisdom, they use their minds to vote rather than the emotion of oh, what I believe in, what I believe in. So I leave that with you. Please vote if you're in the UK. It's very important that we as a nation put that X on that sheet to say who we believe in, who we want to lead our country. Thank you for watching Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com.